sound of thunder. Amen. I don't know if that's their name or not, but they got a good name. Sounds of thunder. Amen. <laughs> Everyone Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Father, for what our ears are hearing and our eyes will see. We thank you for our faith. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for just being you. And our Lord, we break the bread of life. I pray, God, that I'm not a hindrance to anyone, but speak to your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Yeah. I'm not going to hold you long today in the effort to hear from God. We started a series last week, What to Do When All Hell Breaks Loose. What to do when all hell break loose. And I thought I was going to be able to let that go and just stay there, but he sent me back to the book of Job. And so we in Job chapter 2 today. When we last time we met the brother, brother in bad shape. Satan and the son of the gods were in heaven given their report when God presented Job to Satan for the first time. Y'all remember that? Amen. Amen. All in one day, Job lost his children, his material <coughs> possessions. And it didn't happen all at once. See, you can take things that happen at one time, but when it seems like one things happen back to back, it seemed like it had a greater effect on you. But because Joseph, I mean, Job trust in the Lord, he, he did not curse God nor blame God. Instead, the Bible said Job worshipped him. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to know, why did Job just worship him? Because Job understands that God is sovereign. God is God. And no matter what God do for us, Believe me, ladies and gentlemen, it is the best thing for your life. All right. All right. My mother, she, uh, you know, we told the story once, but for you who heard it, pray for me. Uh, my mother, when we was young, we didn't have this elaborate bank account. So the street would dip down like this in the middle. And so we, the men, the little boys in the street, we thought it would be a good idea to create a swimming pool. So we stopped the holes of the sewer top up with all kind of stuff. And when it flooded, it flooded, baby. We had our own pool. And so what we did, we would get these little sticks and G.I. Joe and place G.I. Joe on the sticks and we would push them around like we was, had our little ship battleships. And all of a sudden, we started having fun and my mother called me. Yeah! Yeah! And my mother had the most embarrassing thing. My, my son experienced it and my wife actually seen her do it. My mother wouldn't yell too many times, but she'd go in the house and get a whistle. And you get all over the neighborhood. And that's the most embarrassing thing for somebody to blow a whistle for you to come home. All your friends are like, ooh, your mama calling you. So I'm down there enjoying myself in the pool, and the whistle blows. I'm like, dang, what she want? Y'all know how y'all did y'all mama. <laughs> and so mama made me come home and she said, boy, don't, 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 just go take your clothes off, some in trunks, and go take a shower and get ready for, for supper. Mama, and next thing you know, about 30 minutes later, a streak of lightning went through there. And we discovered a man got struck down because he was standing in lightning. Mm. You see, I didn't know, but God gave my mother for a morning to bring me home so that I wouldn't be in danger. Amen. Right. And see, so you got to get to a point in your life that you trust God just Amen. like that. Amen. That you may not see what different, what difference will something make if you did or did not do it, but God loves you enough that he places you and puts you in a place where he most knows that you're secure. Are you hearing me today? All right. All right. 
Job said, instead of cussing him, I'm going to praise him. Because whatever I'm going through, God got my back. Tell somebody, God got your back. That just goes to show you anytime Satan on the scene, something bad about to happen. <laughs> Satan comes to Job's house and all hell then broke loose. Yeah. See, you got to keep him out your house. Yeah. But then you also got to quit going where he at. Yeah. Are y'all here? Right. Mm. You may not be able to understand the pain of Job, nor the joy of Job, because you, you don't know the end results. But Job had no idea what was going on. Then again, you may remember when you was going through something in life. You didn't know the outcome of what was going to happen. The agony. Things just kept happening. And I'm the only one who experienced this. Things just happened in your life and you don't know when the rain is going to stop but you just wish it would quit raining. Amen. Come on, preacher. Amen, man, Job sure right now. Believing in God but praying that the rain will stop. But it's pouring and you don't know when it's going to stop. Your one brother is not strong enough to stop the rain. Mm. All Job knew for sure that he had faith in the Lord. And sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, that's right what God wants you. All you know is that you have faith in the Lord. Like the Son of God, ladies and gentlemen, everybody will stand before God to give an account for their stewardship here on earth. And if you're an unbeliever, you will stand in front of the white throne of judgment and record a revelation. You will, in either way, you're going to stand in front of God and give him a testimony for everything that goes on in your life. You will be right up there next to the sons of God and Satan, give an account on what's going on or what you do and then not do while you're breathing on this earth. Are you hearing me? Amen. So here's your ideas. Probably asking the same question you and I will ask. Why? Why, Lord? Y'all ever ask God why? Amen. Why? He's probably waiting for his prayers. Mm. Waiting on the rain to stop. But verse 2, verse 1 in chapter 2 says this. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came alone also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, From where did you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and from on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man, who fears God and shuns evil? And still he holds fast to his integrity. Although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. Job is praying, waiting for the rain to stop, and God has the audacity to make a deal. He's making a deal on, on Job's behalf. But this time, notice the text. He seems to be boasting. That Job is still going to hold his integrity no matter what you do, Jesus right. said. Right. You see, God allows tests because he knows us better than we know ourselves. Amen. Come on, preacher. The problem is we don't know how much we can buy until we have to buy. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody wants benevolence, but we don't want benevolence. We, we want the good things, but we don't want the bad things. You got to go through something to understand what you're made of. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Christ will do it every day. They, they make these nice cars. They really can give us all one. And they run into a brick wall with a dummy in it just to see the strength of the car. Are y'all hearing me? Sometimes God lets you run into a brick wall just so you can see how strong you really are. Yes, sir. Come on, preach. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is what? Faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Research reveals to me that there's a part in our brain mm -hmm. that doesn't hold 
unexpected trauma. So the expect so expectations when it happened, it caused you to lose hope if you don't have no faith. Philippians 1, 6, 6, 6 says this. He who began a good work in you will what? To will. Y'all see that word will? Philippians 1, 6. Y'all don't have it? He who began a good work will do what? Will. Complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now what does will mean? That ain't your name. I know it ain't will. <laughs> he will. That's a promise. Complete it until the day. See, we have the home court advantage. God, who is on our side, knows what we can bear, mm -hmm. but our opponent don't. All right. So the next time this thing starts bothering you, don't shut down by thinking God is punishing you. Rejoice understanding, God, that God has confidence in you, that he knows that you can bear it. All right. The unknown, the dark world in which you must enter is always scary. But when you cut the light on, everything seems normal. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Uh -huh. You got to cut the light on sometime, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -huh. My grandmother, she says, I'm afraid of the dark. And she'll go get you way across the house, make you come cut the light on. Uh -huh. And then when she gets in there, she just is happy. Because the dark is an unknown place. Yes. So your brain doesn't have a place stored that you would know that. But when the light is cut on, these are hold you. That way ain't nothing. Let me make it more plain. Have you ever been through something Come on now. that God has allowed in your life, but in a few weeks later, yeah. as soon as it go by, uh -huh. you say, what was I afraid of? I should have done that the first time. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And what God does, he gives you a testimony because when something else happens, you say, if God bought me from that, he'll show me, bring me through again. I'm happy I got to win. You see, you got to have confidence in God because God has confidence in you. You got to give yourself a praise because everybody don't have confidence in God. It is true. While you trying to work it out, God has already figured it out. But it's up to you to trust in God to complete his work in you. Now, if God has already said he who begins a good work in you will complete it until the day of redemption, the day of Jesus Christ, which is the day of redemption, then you got to know that nothing in this world can take you from the love of God. Nothing can separate you. Nothing is so high, nothing so deep, nothing so wide. Nothing can take you from the love of God. And when you got the love of God on your side, baby, can't nothing in this world ever hinder you. You got to have the faith and confidence and the ability of Jesus Christ. But what happens? We depend on our own ability and find out really that we got inability. God said, you just keep on going. And in a few minutes, in a few minutes, as soon as you get tired of beating your head against the door, as soon as I let you stay in that whirlwind that you stepped into, as soon as you go over there because you was chasing something that you shouldn't been chasing, I'm going to let you sit there for a little while, but as soon as I get tired, as soon as I get tired of seeing your breath, you know how it is when you tell your child, go in the room, and this child is you get tired of hearing that noise, sooner or later you open that door, you let that child out, you got to cry out to God every now and then, because God is hearing everything you say, and sooner or later he will, his justice swill. Third. You gotta just go on. Don't give up on God. No verse 4 5. Satan is still convinced that Job's relationship with God is shallow. Job is faith is strong, but Satan don't understand that. Because Satan can't have the love of God because Satan don't know love. All right, all right. So he don't recognize love when he sees it. He insisted that Job may have lost his children. He insisted that because Job may have lost his wealth, selfishly, he will love God because he's okay. Are y'all are, are feeling this? Sometimes it feels like Nothing in your life is ever going right. 
But tell somebody, God, get, God is in control. The Bible says in verse 6, again, there was another day. Job doesn't know it. But God under Satan's control, uh, uh, Satan under God's control is on his way. Job is there, praying, fasting, waiting. And here comes Satan. He ain't taking no greyhound. That ain't that take too many stops. <laughs> he ain't taking Amtrak because that's too long. But he does travel faster than the plane. So we know time is taken because God is the only one that's on my presence. Satan can't be with you and somebody else at the same time. Are you hearing me? That's why he's sending these little demons after you. Because he can't be everywhere like God. And when he really does, who is your child of God? Listen to this. Because you're God's child, Satan really don't come after you himself. Because you understand, no man can pluck you out of the hands of God. So he sends a little demons to try to antagonize and scare you. But when you hold on to God, yeah. don't tell you But when you understand that by and by God will always be there for you, you got to hold on that to somebody that, that's called a solid rock. You got to understand that that bridge you get across it, God is the beam that's holding it up. You got to understand that that line you stand in, God is the sin that high in death. You got to understand that fool line you in, God is the cashier. You you got to say that God is sitting in front of that face. Whatever you do, make sure that you understand that God has gone already before you can make a way. Because he cannot lie. He said, I'll make a escape for you. He might even say it. Job was still mourning, still praying, still seeking justice. He might even say what all of us say. What else? Can happen. Y'all have been there? Uh -huh. What else can happen next? But read verse 7. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils uh, from his sole of his feet, foot to the crown of his head. My God. This time, Satan has attacked Job's health. He already lost his children. <clears throat> he already had lost his wealth. But now the brother can't even work. What do you do when all hell break loose? Psychologically, this had to be tormenting God, Job. Because he was a worker and he was a provider. And for any man not to be able to provide for his home is devastating. Are y'all hearing me? I ain't talking about some of them juke joint gas. I'm talking about a man. Okay. If a man know that he can't work, so he can get antagonized. Something goes on if he can't put proof food on the table. Are y'all hearing me that here? Job was in a mental state, but also he's in a physical state. Now he's unable to work because he's sick. He's sick. But look at verse 8. That's what I found exciting. And he took for himself a part share, which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of ashes. Now according to 29, verse 7 and 8, Job's once sat at the gate of the city. People were bowing down to Job. People was honoring Job. He was a social socialite. But look at him now. He has taken up residence in a city dump. He's out there where they burn trash at the end of town, sitting in ashes. World power has no power over God's children. He's there with the rest of the bankers. He's there with the rest of the rejects. And people are looking at him in bankers. But what I like about Job, the Bible says that Job just didn't sit there and suffer. Okay. He knew that his God was bigger than anything else. Oh, man. He understood that God is bigger than life. Uh -huh. So his hope may be gone, but his faith kicked in. You see, hope is within yourself, but faith 
greater than God. Yeah. Amen. He found a piece of broken pottery. And he went to work on himself. Are y'all hearing me? Come on, man. You see, if you want to change your image, you got to stop having this pity party and work on yourself. Amen. You can't sit down and look for somebody to blame. And you might have to go back to school. You might have to change your house. You might have to change your clothes. That grill might have to get popped about your mouth. Whatever's hindering you from advancing in life, you got to do it because God is already there waiting for you. Hey. Yes, sir. It's a separate thing. Hope for everything that what? Not seen. Yes, yes, you gotta operate just like it's already yours. So I said, look, this thing gonna get me down. He starts scraping them boils and so and I can see it oozing all out of the body. People looking at him, but Joel didn't care. He said, for God I live and for God I will die. I got to get back to where I used to be. And he got up. And he went to work on himself. Tell somebody, go to work on yourself. Too many people faith is and works are based on other people's approvals. And they hide behind the state. My house, my home is my first priority. When in actuality, your relationship with Jesus Christ yeah, yeah. is your first priority. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So, some believe that God, now you know I had to ask this question. I ain't mean, but I had to ask it. If God allowed Satan to kill his children, and Satan had free reigns to destroy his property, why didn't Satan kill Joel's wife when he was killing everybody else? Mm -hmm. Come on. Why didn't he kill the messenger that kept bringing Job all these messages? All right. So you gotta watch who bringing your messages. Come on, preacher. Because they may be working for Satan. Yeah. Come on. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? All right, all right. He allowed some believe that Satan didn't get permission from God to kill Job's wife. All right. But I can't go with that. Because God didn't give Satan to permit to kill his children either. All right. But he killed them. So could it be that she fitted and Satan plan to destroy her own husband? Oh, you ain't hear me. Could it be that Satan didn't kill his wife because Satan said, I got something for her to do. She's out there just like the world. She partying. She ain't thinking about God. I got somebody. And if God can't get to you, he'll get to somebody in your heart. Now you hear what I'm saying? God works through other people to get to you. His job is to alienate you from God. And he'll do everything that he can to get you there. See what it is. Satan's primary goal is to destroy us. You see, let me tell you about humans. Psychologists say this. Humans build structures around them to support their identity. And if one structure is removed, we instantly build another or experience something we call negativity and depression. And finally, when you go through negativity and depression, then you start feeling useless. And when you start feeling useless, you are almost about ready to die. You feel like I have no place in the world, so you don't do nothing in the world. You feel like I'm just gonna stay home and let the time go by. Well, maybe it'll be nightfall soon, and you take a pill and you go to sleep. You wake up taking another pill. Baby, get off that thing. Jesus Christ got something for you to do. Gabriel has not blown that trumpet. The end of life is not here. You still have a purpose on this earth, and God says your purpose is to worship and exert me in the name of Jesus. Say that I'm gonna destroy you because if I destroy you, then I can conquer the rest of the Christian All right. Job identified himself with his family. He identified himself with wealth. He identified himself with friends. And he identified himself with social status. So now here Job is. Almost structureless. His wealth is gone. His social support is gone. And just when he's trying to fix himself up, y'all have been here just when you try to do something good for yourself. Just when all hope is gone. Just when you see a little ray of sunlight coming through the window. 
Now his family supported God. Have you ever felt like there's a kickstand being kicked from up under you? Amen. The wind just got taken out yourself. Yes, sir. Come on. Next time this happens, you got to understand verse 10. All right. But he said to her, you speak as one of those foolish women who speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and shall not accept adversity? And all this, Job did not sin with his lips. All right. You see, Satan wants to destroy us. And I told you earlier that he does it slowly. He takes things away from you little by little so that you would feel like you're going downhill. But let me ask you something. How can a child that's going up to heaven be going downhill? Yeah, that's imagination that he puts in your heart. Yeah. Because no child of God don't go down, we go up. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you exalt God, God takes you up with him. Don't let Satan fool this, put this stuff on you. He tells you that, look, you're no good. You're going to be useless. God don't need you. God don't want you, baby. Right where you at, God is using you in a remarkable way. And you open up your eyes and see the hands of God. Most of us can testify that you ain't been where you were at right now today. You can look back over your life yesterday and see what God has brought you to today. You can keep on edging and see when I was a little boy, I had no dream that I was going to be right here today. And even though the dark world is between you and your destiny, but you got to understand, baby, that's a fictitious destiny. The grass may look green on the side, but there's holes over there. Because God is really your destiny. And there can't nothing stand between you and the love of God. God will get you to your destiny if you just hold on and wait for God. You got to hold on to the thing. Job said, wait a minute, how in the world can we praise the God today? And all the blessings that God has given us from this day. And all of a sudden, just because I got a little sickness, just because I done lost a few pounds, just because I lost a few jobs, just because I lost a few wealth, just because I lost a few friends, just because I lost my social status, you want me to cuss the God that brought me out from what he brought me out yesterday? Don't say, well, you can talk to the wrong person. Get out that beauty salon and get on your knees. John Jones said, you got to come and understand that God is a long time God. He will not never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. You gotta understand what Job was dealing with here. For a man to spoke close to close, close to, to his heart uh -huh. is this woman. And that's why Satan didn't go after Adam. Come here, Eve. He came after you. That's why he didn't go to Samson. He went to the lion. Are uh, y'all hear what I'm saying? First Peter said you got to pray for the woman as the weaker vessel. Uh, hey, don't get mad and get up. Wait, that's what the Bible says. Come on. You got to stop talking about God and become a child of God. You can't get a membership card. And just because something happened, you want to revoke your membership. It don't work like that. What tickles me is we stand and we take all day to get dressed. Most weddings are late because the woman in there getting dressed for 15 minutes to stand in front of somebody. She walked down the aisle and she looked good. And that man standing there thinking about all kinds of stuff. Get your man out because he thinks about how the bill's going to be paid. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks at that and he said, how am I going to take care of this child? Uh -huh. You see, that's what God see. God see us coming down the aisle. We stand in front of God, man, and we make these vows for better or for worse. For sick or for... Hello. Hell, 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 hell. See, y'all know the thing. Y'all been there. <laughs> Thinking then you're going to stay together. Let's keep it to the street. Are y'all here? So why is it when the groomsmen who has already married you bring you down the aisle, give you salvation, 
a ring bigger than any man can give you, give you a mansion that no man can ever give you, put you on a street paved as gold, straight gates of jasper that no man can give you. You don't bag out that marriage. You try to hold on to that marriage. But when something go wrong with your marriage with God, you be the worst. I want a divorce. I don't mind. You just left God. I ain't left you. You left God. Oh, you hear what I'm saying today? If we are so committed to our marriage on earth, why are we not so committed to our marriage in heaven? Yes, Lord. She was sitting there, Joe, cuss God, and just die. That's what she was saying. Because anytime you curse God, baby, you bound to be you. That's suicide. Are y'all hearing me? Joe said, woman, you just got to be out of your mind. You got to know that you know. That you know. And when you finish knowing that, then you got to know some more. That God is the love of your soul. And he died on that cross so that you can have an everlasting life, eternal life with him. And he'll give a rider. Give God a praise. Job's mental pain. He has no family support. He has no wealth. No social support. All he left, he got left with some friends. But look at verse 11. Now when Job's three friends heard of this adversity that had come upon him, each one came from his own place. El Paz, Timonite, Baldad, and Shuhite, and Shapar, Neomite, the, the Neomite, for they had been, had made an appointment together to come and mourn with him and comfort him. First well says, and when they raised their eyes from afar, they did not recognize him. They lifted their, their voices and wept, and each one to his robe and sprinkled dust on his head towards him. And that was a ritual. So, that, so they sat down with him on the ground seven days and seen and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his grief was very far. They bought culture, but they didn't bring a prayer. See, nowhere in the Bible does it say that they prayed for Job. Are y'all here? You don't need friends like that. Nope. When you doubt it out, you need somebody to get together and come to your house and pray. Amen. You need support. And let me tell you something, silence is gold. You don't need nobody that's going to come and do what they're going to do in the future. They all start telling Job, Job, go ahead and confess that you sin. God will forgive you. You see, they had this ideology just because something's wrong, you didn't see it. Baby, something is always wrong. The book of Job told sometimes when you're sick and sometimes you're going through, something's right. You got to get up that old teaching that you see it now, something wrong. God is mad at you now because you ain't advancing or you're not moving around or you don't have what you want. Baby, God ain't mad at you. If God was mad at you, he never went to, went to Calvary Cross and died for you. How do you hear what I'm saying? Don't let people put that ideology in your head that because you don't have what somebody else has, God is mad at you and like them. The devil could have gave that to them, but God has given you eternal life. Are you hearing me today? Explanation. Don't build faith. Interactions with God builds faith. So don't run from interaction with God. Don't run from problems. Let God take you through it. Because I told you last week, if God bring you to it, he'll take you through it. Amen. Are you hearing today? Amen. It's nothing anyone can say to make you have faith. You have to trust God with faith. Job didn't need them to examine his life. He needed their prayers and support. But sadly, when every support system was gone, his family, his wealth, his social prestige, and now even his family, his friends, sad, hopeless, 
And all alone, Job jo never forsaken God. But in chapter 3, 1, Job wished he was never born. Oh, have mercy. But the story don't end there. Job began to listen to his friends. Then he started questioning God. But after God got him straight, you know, God will get you straight. And verse 42, 4 through 6, Job's relationship deepens. And God, with God, and Job started repenting. In 42 10, after God's wrath aroused around Job's freedom, the Lord restored Job twice as much as what he hated. You see, you don't know what God's plan is for your life. You don't know just because it's like you in a dry spell. You gotta be like an Ezekiel, that's where the old dead bones live. You gotta get to the point that it doesn't matter what's going on in your life, you gotta know that God is doing the best thing for you. And when you hold on to God, so take your hand. When you rebuke this social world, when you quit trying to chase something that is not there, God is saying, now you have a step to a level of maturity. And I can bless you what I wanted to bless you with. Because more than more, if God bless us to where we really want to be blessed, you will be right where you at today. You will be the person who you are today. Because you will take that blessing, you'll be somewhere else. Are y'all here? In closing, when the research was done with college students, they realized that most of the college students who was committing suicide was those who came from middle to high income. Because they was given something. And when they got to a point in their life that what they was given freely couldn't be reproduced, it caused depression. And they committed suicide. But when you get, when you come from a ground and you understand the steps that God has taken you to. When you gotta get it based on faith and not on somebody else's pocket. When you get knocked down, you know how to get back up. Cause you said I'd have been there once. All right, all right. And God, I serve, is the one that did it. Put your faith in God. Because Jesus Christ came and he put his faith in you. Everyone stand.